we're doing it. We're actually doing it. We're making a clans video. And no, it's not a KDX Lance clans. It's a real bonafide red and blue. Clans took the fandom by storm the moment season one dropped. Before Olivia and I ever got around to watching Voltron the summer it came out, all we knew about the show was that it was about mechas and everyone shipped those red and blue guys. Are you joking? In the beginning, there were no rival ships. Clance was unparalleled. There were hundreds of fanfics and fan arts created within weeks of Voltron even airing. Everyone in their abuelita was reading that one fanfiction, Dirty Laundry, which had its own fandom for a time. This is how much people loved Clance, and it makes sense why people went so apeshit. DreamWorks was adhering to the tried and true formula of rivals to friends. By the end of the show, whatever the original intent was with this relationship was completely lost. Despite that, the clan's following was so devoted to the pairing that even now people still cling to something that the writers have long abandoned. Whether you perceived their relationship as romantic or platonic, there was a bond forming in the beginning, and DreamWorks let us down in both regards. In order to properly explain why clans failed, we need to go back to the very beginning. When we're introduced to Lance, he is obviously jealous of Keith and considers him a rival. Keith, on the other hand, doesn't even know who Lance is, much less acknowledge their supposed rivalry. This instantly establishes a social dissonance. Lance feels very insecure in comparison to Keith and feels desperate for his approval. On the other hand, Keith doesn't need any approval from Lance and doesn't even care to remember him. We're like rivals, you know, Lance and Keith, neck and neck. Who are you? This is a very appealing way to introduce their relationship because as they are forced to cooperate, tensions will rise until the dissonance must be addressed. When this conflict is addressed, the true motives behind the characters fighting is brought to light and their relationship is transformed. For example, Lance's beef with Keith stems from his own feelings of inferiority and admiration for Keith rather than the dislike it's portrayed as. That's what's so interesting about this trope. The viewers get to see a relationship that changes in an unexpected way because the bad start was a product of one person's internal issues being unintentionally brought out by the other person. The relationship forces the characters to grow and that makes for an enjoyable experience for the viewer. But how far did Voltron get in that process? Well, it clearly established the one-sided rivalry in the very beginning, and then moved on to mutual tensions as the two began interacting on the daily. They appeared to slowly settle into a comfortable coexistence with occasional banter by season 3. Roger that! Team leader. It genuinely appears as though Keith and Lance are beginning to care about each other. But come season four, their steady development came to a jarring end. In episode one, Keith fucked off to the blade. He became totally irrelevant to the team for 10 episodes until the crawl Zara when he suddenly met his mom and had that whole arc with her. He had absolutely no face-to-face -face interaction with the team until season six. The only way that would be acceptable would be if the team was notably affected by his absence, which they weren't. Lance in particular didn't mention him at all. Based on the formula that's been established for us up until this point, we are supposed to assume that he cares about Keith and therefore shouldn't be okay with him leaving the group. Were the writers assuming that we would just think that Lance wasn't okay with it and decide to focus their screen time on other things? The only indication we ever get that this bothered him was a whole season after Keith's return, when Lance yelled at Keith while they were drifting in space for half a second soundbite. What we mean is, after Keith left in season 4, there wasn't a single well-executed indication that Lance gave a shit about Keith at all. Ironically, you can see where the writers cut off all attention to the relationship in the clan's wiki. The first the first three seasons describe pages of scene between the two of them, but between the five most recent seasons, there are only four vaguely relevant moments. Examples of this compelling evidence include quotable moments like When Lance is practicing in the training room, he Bayard becomes a sword, just like Keith had. And in season six, as you can see, the writers were maintaining a steady build of the relationship for the first three seasons, and then immediately dropped the ball after season four, episode one. And they weren't quite able to pick it up after that. So why did the writers completely forget about all of this buildup and all of this development less than halfway through the show? It has to do with the development imbalance. It is no secret in the Voltron fandom that Lance has always drawn the short stick when it comes to screen time and character arcs. Keith, on the other hand, has been constantly developing since the moment he first appeared on screen. Keith just has so much shit going on with him. The half Galra thing, the orphan thing, the Shiro thing, the mysterious past thing, the garrison rebel thing, the loner thing, the leadership thing, the Blade of Marmora thing, the mom thing, the lives in a conspiracy shack in the desert thing, the cosmic wolf thing, and Lance's- Who's the boy from Cuba? The writers have an issue with fully realizing what they start. 
They obviously intended to continue this development until it was rounded out in a satisfying way, but around season 4, they either got distracted with Keith's wealth of arcs, or somehow thought it was acceptable to establish that they no longer hate each other and then abruptly cut off all further communication to the point that season 5's only moment was when Lance is practicing in the training room. He Bayard becomes a sword, just like Keith had. In the end, Lance's character development, whatever it might have been, was scrapped in favor of turning him into an empty receptacle for his romance with Laura. A romance which, in its entirety, paled in comparison to the single interaction between Lance and Keith that the writer somehow thought was a good idea to throw in before Lance's first date. And Lance who knows exactly who he is and what he's got to offer. And who's that, Keith? What are you talking about? Because I don't know, and I'm sure as hell that you don't know either. Oh, wait, you did know. You meant the Lance that's not actually relevant to anything except Laura's love life. Got it. So, this is the scientific diagram we've come up with to explain just how this relationship dynamic tends to work when portrayed in media. As you can see, on the left we begin with a basic rivalry between two individuals. RE is the chemical abbreviation for rivals slash enemies. There are two of them because RE is a diatomic element and cannot stand alone, meaning it is always paired with itself. Clant Season 1 would fit into this category. After the introduction of this dynamic, CD, or character development, is added to the formula inciting a chemical reaction and resulting in the transformation of RE2 into FR2 or friends. As the periodic table states, sometimes the chemical compound SETE sexual tension, is added to the resulting element, which in turn creates a brand new element, LR2 or lovers. Through this extremely accurate science, we've broken down the chemistry involved in character chemistry. Clance does end up in the second category. Unfortunately, the science doesn't work here because the writers forgot to add the development, which is the most important part of building a character bond. Without development, the initial rival relationship cannot properly transform into a friendly or otherwise relationship. Clance fails in this respect, so the resulting friendship they end up with is jarring and comes completely out of left field. It doesn't feel believable because watching these characters progress isn't satisfactory, if the progression exists at all. Regardless of whether you ship it or not, Clance Clance captured people's attention because it was set up the same way that many other Rivals to Friends relationships are set up. But because the writers failed to follow through, the Clance friendship we got by the end of the show was a watered down empty husk of what it had the potential to be. The dynamic they presented at the beginning was interesting. These characters had chemistry. That's why it's so disappointing for so many people that the show ended the way it did. Making a video about it can't change what happened, but it can help prevent disasters like this from occurring in future media. So whether you wanted Keith and Lance to be best friends, brothers, or lovers. In the end, we all lost. Thanks to all our patrons who support the channel so generously, and a special thanks to our space explorers Red Nightmare and Alex Stressball.